All right. Hello, everyone. I'm recording this early. Uh, this is uh, going to be our Fed League Flash for Tuesday. It's currently Monday night, but tomorrow's a busy day. So we're getting the head jump on things. And uh, as I promised you, today we're going to be breaking down the Motor City Rockers, who uh, one of the three uh, newest members of the FPHL. And, uh, of course, they came in this year along with the Elmira Mammoth and the Mississippi Seawolves, uh, located in Fraser, Michigan. If you don't know where that is, it's about uh, 20 miles, not even 20 miles, uh, slightly northeast of downtown Detroit. So it is part of the greater uh, Detroit metro area. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there were uh, minor league teams before. Um, Hockey uh, Database has them listed as UHL, but it was actually the Colonial Hockey League, which was kind of the predecessor to the UHL. Um, and the team was the Michigan Falcons, uh, played there for four years in the same arena, Big Boy Arena, which uh, is uh, right in the heart of Fraser. Now the team was first announced originally. The team was going to be playing for the uh, 2020, the 2021 season, but then uh, there was a little thing called COVID and that happened. And the team said, you know what? We're just going to hold off for now. So uh, at that point, they kind of withdrew uh, their, the, the ownership group, withdrew their bid to become part of the Fed, uh, came back a couple years later with new ownership in place and got things set for this season. So it's kind of like a take two type of story. Uh, anyway, OK, so, yes, they play in Big Boy Arena, which seats thirty four hundred. It's a nice arena, um, even though the complex is about 50 years old. Uh, it's been maintained and upkept and and everything uh, really, really nice. Um, literally, the arena is 20 miles away from Little Caesars Arena, which is where the Detroit Red Wings play. And therein lies the problem. Uh, Motor City's problem is not um, their on-ice su success. Uh, they're having a very good year. Um third place in the continental right now with a 26 16 and six record for 81 points secured their playoff spot. You know, they're going to be uh, part of the big dance, but the problem is they just can't get people in the seats. And that's in spite of um, what I think was a very good uh, period of time building up the roster uh, they got big signings. They signed Ian White, who, of course, used to play with the Red Wings and Toronto Maple Leafs and Anaheim and San Jose. Uh, they signed Travis Ridgen, who um, a lot of people already knew before this year. You know, hey, he's that minor league goalie has the, the hockey blog uh, on YouTube. Uh, so they got that. They got their other goaltender, Trevor, ba uh, Trevor Babin. In the expansion draft, Babbitt had played last year with uh, Delaware. And uh, they also chose Scott Koash, who had uh, his rights held by Binghamton uh, last year. So, you know, they're, they're building a good team. They're building a good product. Um, it's just that they're having a very, very difficult time uh, competing for a market share, if you will, because, I mean, they've got to go up against all four big four sports. Um, they're competing against the Red Wings, the Pits, Pistons, uh, the Lions, the Tigers. And, you know, that's a really hard draw in spite of it. They've gotten some publicity online and online and on TV in the local market, just having Problems filling the, the arena right now. They're averaging 909 fans per game, which that's eighth in the league. 
and that's only ahead of Watertown and Delaware, which are, you know, those two teams are considered the last two remnants of the small rink, small market uh, uh, teams. Uh, This situation that they've got going on, just trying to compete for, um, for fans, it's somewhat reminiscent, only on a much grander scale. Uh, when the FPHL started off first season, they placed a team in Binghamton, well, outside of Binghamton, New York. Uh, now, Binghamton already had the Binghamton Senators in the AHL, and that's why the first-year team, the Broome County Barons, failed because they just could not get anybody to come to the games. They were averaging like 250 fans, and that was it. But, uh, I mean, now you're you're in a major market. You're going against major teams. You know, Detroit is one of the original six teams uh, in the NHL. So, I mean, that's, that's tough competing there. Now, they're well-stocked. Again, they've got a great roster. Uh, They've got five players right now with 10 or more goals. They got five players with 20 or more assists. Um, And, you know, I think they can go very far in the playoffs. Every player on their roster is playoff eligible. They've met the 15 game eligibility requirements. So uh, they're, they're going to be well stocked and ready for bear. Um, It's just a matter of who goes to see them. Um, Just looking at the team, uh, they're averaging 3.7 goals per game, which isn't, you know, uh, overwhelming, but it's good. It's steady offense, uh, only surrendering 3.42 goals per game, 15 uh, plus 15 in differential power play is second in the league, 22% power. uh, The penalty kill is 81.1%, which right now is sixth middle of the league. But uh, as you look at the roster, I mean, you've got Scott Koash leading the way. Again, he was one of those uh, big expansion draft uh, signings. Uh, 33 goals, 54 points. you got Conway Declan, 20 goals, 42 points. Uh, Brad Ryder has got 29 assists to go with 38 points. Um, their leading defensiveman as far as scoring is Josh Colton. 28 assists from the blue line. Uh, They had Ian White earlier uh, in the time that Ian was there. He got 22 points uh, in, I think it was 25 games. So that was pretty good. Uh, Derek Makima, 17 goals, 17 assists, 34 points. Uh, You got uh, Dante Safradini, 26 assists. Tommy Cardinal is chipping in 18 goals. So, I mean, they're scoring from all over the place. They're a very well-balanced team. It's not like you can just focus on one line and, or, or one player and try and shut them down. You've got to deal with three lines rotating, uh, and all of them can put the puck in the net. And, again, they're defensively responsible. They're not giving up a huge amount of goals. Um yeah, in that you've got Trevor Babin, who you know he played lights out last year for a very weak Delaware team, but kept Delaware competitive. This year, with a much better club in front of him, he's seventeen, twelve, and four, a three point one four goals against, nine fifteen save percentage, very, very good. And the backup, Blake Scott, also playing great in in his own right, eight four and two with a three point four eight goals against. And a 902 save percentage. Now their remaining schedule, they have eight games left. Very, very favorable. Um, they've got two games coming up this weekend, uh, hosting Binghamton. And then after that, they play a home and home. The last two games against their nearby rivals in Port Huron. And then after that, they've got four games against the Mississippi Seawolves, who, of course, have already been eliminated from the playoffs. Uh, two down in Mississippi, and then the final two games of the year, they go back to Fraser and host the Seawolves. So uh, they've got a really good opportunity to solidify third place in the standings. Uh, they're five points ahead right now of Port Huron, so you know those two are still going to be pretty close. 
going down the wire, but you know, looking at the two schedules, I would say Motor City has the, I wouldn't say easy, but they, they've got an easier opportunity or a better chance at putting up some points. So again, you know, the question just remains, you know, how do they draw fans in? One of the things that people have pointed to uh, as far as maybe why fans aren't going is their ticket prices are the highest in the league. So this last weekend, they did a promotion. Name your own price. You know, you could say, I'm only paying a dollar for a ticket. And they still only drew 900 fans. So it's it's just a very tough market to try and promote minor league hockey and, you know, lower level minor league really at that. So, you know, they're, they're, they're a good team. Again, very successful on the ice. They've got a good core group, uh, both on the ice and in the front office. Uh, it's just a matter of are they going to be able to figure out how to uh, better uh, promote and market themselves and get the word out to the Detroit community. Hey, we're here. Please come see our games. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a tough sell at this point. So I hope everything goes well for them. Uh, I, I certainly hope that they are able to um, figure out what they've got to do so they can come back again next year better and stronger time will tell so anyway that is a brief look at the motor city rockers uh hope you enjoyed this uh, let me know in the comments below what you think um you know what you see with the rockers what you like about them what you think eh, you know they might need some work in this area let me know uh make sure to hit like hit subscribe. And as always, you can always check out all the videos that I do here at youtube.com at FPHL flash. All right. I'm Gary Ryan. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Thank you for all your support and we will talk to you again soon.